The Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to Big Pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts with you, and you can't stand against the machine if you're sick, tired, and obese. When you visit InfoWarsHealth.com, be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products. And get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Alex Jones here with a message to fellow freedom lovers. The prognosis for the entire planetary economic system runs from bad to worse. The globalist model is to shut down societies and starve patriots out until they acquiesce to the global takeover. That's why we've assembled the most vital and important preparedness items at InfoWarsShop.com. These are items that I did research on, that I personally use. You've got the life straw, so you can turn fetid water into safe water anywhere you go. The KTOR hand crank generator to charge up key equipment during power outages or out in the field. Strategic Relocation 3rd Edition by Joel Skousen. When Disaster Strikes by Matthew Stein. Therosafe used by Homeland Security to protect yourself during any radiological event. Hand crank shortwave AM FM radios. Everything that we've researched and found to be the best is available at InfoWarsShop.com and your purchase makes our InfoWar possible. We're getting prepared. Are you? InfoWarsShop.com Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. Okay, with your engineering background and also being a state of Texas licensed radiation safety officer and health safety officer, you can give us your breakdown on somebody who I know every day follows what's happening with Fukushima and other issues on the danger level. And, and the late nuclear physicist, uh, Dr. Bob Bowman, who died last year, a good friend of mine, former head of the Star Wars program, that's basically what he said. He said, it's like Chernobyl. You'll just see an increase in cancers across the board, unattributable to that. And, you know, he said millions will probably end up dying, you know, of cancers down the road, but we'll never know. And the Northern Hemisphere gets more and more radioactive. My bigger issue is that they just don't seem to care now, and there's more and more of these disasters happening. But you were getting into... There are groups out there that put out sensational stuff uh, that isn't really true that the media can then focus in on. But but then you get like 14 times what it's supposed to be in San Francisco and the media says, well, that's true, but it's not a big deal. And as you said, the uh, EPA raises the levels of what they say is safe. So, you know, that's my big issue. And I want to break down Fukushima with you, but go ahead and make your point. You, you uh, The, the, the uh, break ran into the satellite, uh, you know, cutting in and it was... Uh, you were saying something like you think it might be disinfo on purpose saying people can fry eggs on the beach. I think that there's just too much of the garbage and the silliness about uh, we're all going to fry next week. 
And then when somebody actually comes out and does an expose on this, like, for example, your team goes out there and finds active levels of material on the beach, then you're chunked into the category of the same loons that put out bogus garbage. And I, I can't help but wonder if bogus garbage was put out there so that your good work would be, uh, would be laughed at or whatever, or not taken seriously. Now, I could ask the questions here, but I want to give you the floor to talk about your research and where you think we really are. I think we are given right now a golden opportunity to see the future. I think Fukushima is a, uh, a, um, an example of what could happen many times over, even in our own country, maybe not from a tsunami, but we have a large number of those plants that were manufactured, they're identical. The reactors are identical to the ones that, that were installed at, at Fukushima. And I think by understanding that if we had a, a coronal mass ejection or something like that, we'd have huge numbers of reactors that would begin to operate exactly like Fukushima. The only difference is in most cases in this country, we have a whole lot more control rods, spent rods, uh, at each site than Fukushima has. Uh, that's hard to believe, but that's that's a fact. And uh, so it gets kind of scary. We also have uh, at least six that I know of that may be as high as 20 that are on fault lines in this country. Fukushima's a lesson, and I'm afraid everybody's playing at recess and they're not listening to the lesson. Uh, we have a situation in Japan that the wind will change and the material will, will drift over the rest of the whole, the whole island. And uh, you can go to uh, Tokyo and get high readings, but the government's saying, oh, no, no, everything's fine. Hey, I'm going to eat some of this uh, seafood. You know, uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe's going out and eating seafood. I'll bet he is. Amazing. You've had so many of the TEPCO people that were there now die and you've got cover-ups going on. It, I agree with you, though. For me, Fukushima is a golden opportunity to try to educate myself and others. But it's also an education how governments and corporations, again, are delusional now. Absolutely. We're looking at a, a corporation that has no clue about to do anything. As Gunderson said, I think it was on Joyce Riley's show, said something about these people are operators. They're not engineers. They haven't got a clue. They know how to operate a system once it's designed and put in. But beyond that, they're only operators. And now we don't have enough people to operate the facilities. So what do they do? They go find homeless people on the streets of, of uh, the major cities, and they're considered disposable people. They give them a, a nice hot meal, a fancy white suit, and tell them they're going to do something really important for their country. Well, what Japanese person in that society wouldn't be honored to do something for their country? They, they don't even understand that they're going to die. So the government that's dishonorable uses the honor of its good people against yes. the people. Yes, of course they do. That's why nobody, well, I won't say nobody, but there's very few people marching in the streets demanding why Why is my little daughter or my son now have uh, some kind of lesion on the thyroid? You've got a huge number of children in the whole whole country that are showing signs of thyroid, uh, future thyroid cancer, uh, at least in uh, uh, the Chernobyl situation. Uh, Poland, for example, went out and immediately handed out the iodine, and virtually no person ever came down Listen, with thyroid cancer. I had the Navy lieutenant on yesterday, and they filed suit, as you know, against TEPCO with his Good. lawyer, who's in a wheelchair and on a catheter now, and they've got a whole bunch of people that's happening to Well, you heard it good uh, for yes. new listeners. They didn't even give the people, except the pilots that were flying over, or if you were on the deck, they didn't give them iodine, even though they had it on the Ronald Reagan. That's correct. Absolutely. Again, the attitude of, eh, they're disposable people. I believe you made the comment, well, why wouldn't they, somebody tell why don't they use monkeys? People cost less. Wasn't that something that was on your program? Yes, people that's something monkeys. my dad was told by a research scientist. Yeah, exactly. 
And that's the attitude that TEPCO had. TEPCO just lost their chairman because he floated a trial balloon to try to raise a lot more money for this project by taxing or raising the rates on the uh, on the uh, the ratepayers, so that their profits would remain high. And finally, it got out, so he had to resign. So he had to replace that particular chairman. That happened uh, two, half, three weeks ago. And well, so you've been studying reactors for decades as an engineer and a uh, licensed radiation safety officer and health officer. What would you do to clean up the nuclear industry? What's your view on nuclear power? A long time ago, I was like you. I thought it was a good idea. Uh, I could see how it could be safely operated. We used to talk about putting the material in, in, a, in a containment and yucca flaps and burying it. But the Defense Department decided to buy all the old rods and turn them into uh, uh, weapons and to depleted uranium weapons. So how we've dumped 40,000 tons of that material on uh, the Middle East, and uh, that's that. The nuclear power industry is the most dangerous thing we've ever done on the, in the history of the world. Because if you had one, or, or let, me, let me ask you this. Do you remember that idiotic program on public television that said after man, and there were deer running around? Yes. And, oh, it's just going to be so great. Well, here's the scenario. If you have a coronal mass ejection, like the Carrington event in 1858, 59, where all the electronics fry on this planet, the first thing you would have is all of the buildings, which now have wire in them, catch on fire. So you, you're standing around choking to death in the dark. Six weeks later, all of the 711 uh, nuclear power plants that we have would go critical. So we're one Carrington event for a mass extinction of every living thing on this planet. And I think Einstein said it uh, well. He said it's a hell of a way to boil water. And <laughs> I says, what, what do you mean by that? And I said, okay, I'm going to boil water in a bucket out in the backyard. In a year, you can find the ashes. In 10 years, you can't. In 100 years, you can't. In 1,000. In 10,000. But if I boil uh, equivalent amount of water with the uranium material that they're using now, four and a half billion years from now, I can find the waste of when I boiled water for a single day. Now, somebody is nuts. That's right. The more you study the nuclear power industry, you, the more you realize they are a menace. And again, they had DU back in the 50s. They wouldn't allow it to be used till 1990. There is a fundamental insanity by the people running the social engineering and the decision-making process. And I think, we, Alex, we have people now who I genuinely believe, like you're talking about the uh, people say they sold their soul. I think we're dealing with uh, leaders who have no soul. We're dealing with people, corporations have no soul. I mean, it's it's supposed to be under the law. That's a person. Well, that's a soulless person. So if you're working for a corporation like TEPCO, it has no soul, and the people are there to maintain the corporation. So they're working for a soulless entity, and there there isn't any conscience in a corporation unless they're good people. Well, we found out there are very few good people there. They're willing to use the poor and the uneducated, and they're willing to sacrifice their own children and next generation and possibly a lot more people if they come over there for the olympics now, who are these people what are the what right do they have to do that i think it's about the fact that they don't have the right and they are vandalizing the planet the species yes. the genetic genome of the entire biosphere uh, they, they come to kill steal and destroy I've, I've only read in history in all cultures about one entity whether it be fiction or real who behaves like this and he has a name. It's Lucifer, Satan, the devil. I mean, that's really what I think it comes down to. Absolutely. Let, let me tell you what these people, this is the thing that I just have to, to laugh in irony. These people say, well, it's not so bad. There's just a little bit in, in the water, blah, 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 blah. Yes, but it's a gift that keeps on giving for a minimum of another four to six generations. There's no control of this thing. Now, let's let's assume for just a moment I'm Harry Potter and I can make all the radiation go away in the whole world, even Fukushima. 
I'm sorry, but we still 